اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین وسلم الله على محمد و آله الطاهرین ورس نمبر 136 اف سور النساء یا ایوه الذین آمنوا آمنوا بالله و رسوله و الكتاب الذی نزل على رسوله والكتاب الذي أنزل من قبل ومن يكفر بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر فقد ظل ظلالا بعيدا أغي هو have faith have faith in Allah and his messenger and the book that he has sent down to his messenger and the book he had sent down earlier Whoever disbelieves in Allah and his angels, his books and his messengers, and the last day has certainly strayed into far error. In our last session, just uh, briefly, very quickly, I mentioned that uh, this verse is actually act asking, requesting the believers to believe. يا أيها الذين آمنوا آمنوا بالله. and this has raised the question that if they are all they have already believed, what's the meaning of believe believing again? Uh, one of the interpretations says that it means that faith should include all elements that one should believe in. to be regarded as a believer. It is not enough to believe just in one part and deny or defy other parts. You have to wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly believe in everything. Faith is a complete whole, is a package of different elements that one should commit themselves to. As uh, in Tafsir al-Khashif, Marhum Mughliya mentions, he says sometimes a person believes in the Creator, but denies his prophets, denies that he has sent any messenger. So, Aminu Billahi wa Rasul. And sometimes believes in his messengers, and believes in one book, but denies the others. Sometimes he believes in the messenger and the book, but denies the existence of angels, for example. The day of judgment. So he mentions this verse has stated all the pillars of faith that a person who has abandoned polytheism and atheism must confess and believe as an indiv- indivisible whole. So Iman is an indivisible whole. You should believe in all of it. So, to believe in one element and deny others would not make someone a believer. It's just, it's just like some people say, we believe in God, but we don't believe in the Day of Judgment. This is not the faith that is required in Islam. And one of the instances of nifah, hypocrisy, hidden hypocrisy, is that the person believes in one element and one part and deny other parts. So the verse, in a sense, is saying that all you have believed, believed just uh, initially, believed in the faith as something, as a whole, but have not yet faith in the details of it. You do not believe in the unseen world, for example. You say, oh, I believe in God, I believe in the day of judgment, but there is no unseen world, for example. No angels, no, no one working behind the scene in this world to, uh, to make The, the life and the existence of the universe possible, then, of course, you have missed some elements. So, 
This is one interpretation of the verse. You who are all you who have faith, who have faith in the sense that you have believed in Islam, but not believed in the details and different elements, different tenets of it, believe in all tenets of faith. This is one interpretation. Another interpretation of this verse is that sometimes we believe in the sense that we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. But this is not a real faith. This is just some, only a confession. It doesn't entail anything. So by saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah, we have, we are regarded as believers actually. But we have to believe in whatever this statement entails. So, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, amenu. Or we may say that this verse is addressing the hypocrites who are actually in the Quran addressed as Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu because they mentioned, they stated the shahadatain in the presence of the believers, but they did not actually believe. So, all you who have faith, and your faith is not real, have real faith. As the, the following verses also talk about munafiqin and hypocrites, this may be an acceptable interpretation of the verse. So, one interpretation is that all you have believed in Islam, in faith, without believing in its details, in its uh, different tenets, believe in all of that. Believe in the prophets, books, angels, day of judgment. The other interpretation is about the monafiqun or hypocrites, advising them to have faith rather than disbelief, although they are addressed as Ya ayyuhal ladina the other interpretation, which some commentators have mentioned, is that all you who have faith, persist in your faith. Aminu ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. Aminu means persist, continue in your faith. Have thabat, firmness in your faith. Be well, be careful, not lose it. This is another meaning. And something which uh, many commentators have mentioned is that actually this verse is not addressed to the Muslims at all. Well, this of course is not uh, uh, in agreement with the context of the verses. However, many commentators have mentioned this. That for example, uh, it is an address to the Jews and the Christians. You who have believed in God, in his messengers and his, in his book, believe in this messenger and in this book and believe in the books sent before, means your books, because your books have also mentioned the truthfulness of this message so believe in them as well so when the verse says if if we say that this is addressed to the people of the book it means that oh you who have faith believe in allah and his messenger and the book that he has sent down to his messenger the quran and the book that he has sent before that is your book well, of course, they believed in their own book, but they did not believe in certain parts of their book, which uh, testified to the truthfulness of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So this is another interpretation that uh, many exegetes have mentioned. Uh, the verse continues threatening those who ignore the true faith, those who confess the just 
summarily in faith. However, the tenets of faith they do not believe in. It says, وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَقَدْ ذَلَّ ذَلَالًا بَحِيدٍ Whoever disbelieves in Allah and His angels, His books and His messengers, and the last day, has said many straight into far error. This shows that the believers should have firm faith in the unseen world. Some of the believers say, we don't believe in the angels, for example. Because we do not see them. We see everything is working uh, without the need for angels, for example. However, all religious, religious books have emphasized the existence of a world above this world, which is, in a sense, running this world. And believing in that, because many affairs were well, for example, when we want to be transferred to the next world, this is done by the angels. You are protected by the angels. Many things are made possible in this world by the angels. So Allah says you have to, you shouldn't just see the apparent uh, sight of the events, apparent sight of things. You have to see the, what is beyond that. And this is something which is very emphatically mentioned at the end of Surah Baqarah that we discussed before. Amana Rasulu Bima Unzela Elehi Marabbihi Wal Mu'minun. Now mentioning Rasul having faith in this means that this is something that even the messenger must confess and must be a leader of others in believing such things. آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِمَ الرَّبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌّ آمَنَتْ بِاللَّهِ All believe in Allah وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَلٍ بِالرُّسُلِ It do not differentiate between any one of his messengers. They cannot say, we believe in this messenger and we do not believe in that messenger. Anyhow, this is quite clear and this is in effect an instruction to the people who were mentioned previously in, in this verse. To, it is a, a conclusion about Many concepts, ideas, precepts, instructions that were mentioned before, like for example, Kunu Kawamina Bil Kasta Shahada Alillah. If you want to be faithful, yes, you have to observe that as well. So all you who say that you have faith have real faith. For example, stand for justice, testify for Allah. Or do not ask uh, to be discriminated uh, against others, for example. Or others to be discriminated by the Prophet for your sake. Things like that. Anyhow, the following verse is a continuation of that. All you who have faith, have faith. But if... You have faith, and then you waver, you disbelieve. And then again you say, oh, I believe again. I want to come back to faith, and then you disbelieve again. Then there are some consequences for that. In verse number 137, إِنَّ آمَنُوا ثُمَّ كَفَرُ ثُمَّ آمَنُوا ثُمَّ كَفَرُ ثُمَّ ازْدَادُوا كُفْرًا لَمْ يَكُنِ اللَّهُ لِيَغَثَرَ لَهُمْ وَلَا لِيَهْدِيَهُمْ سَبِيلًا Those who believe and then disbelieve. Then believe again and then disbelieve. And then increase in disbelief. Allah shall never forgive them. 
لم يكن الله ليغفر لهم shall never forgive them nor shall they guide them to any path or to any way now about ان الذين امنوا ثم كفروا ثم امنوا ثم كفروا ثم ازدادوا كفرا you see first they believe then they disbelieve for the third time they believe for the fourth time they disbelieve and then they continue in disbelief ثم ازدادوا كفرا they go deeper and deeper in disbelief about who is meant or which group of people are meant by this there are different views among commentators as it is mentioned in majma al bayan he says that qila fi ma'nahu aqwal there are different views in that one is that it is meant what is meant by it the people who are meant by this is those who believed in Musa alayhi salam then they bis- disbelieved by worshiping the calf and they they believe they it means the christians who believed in jesus and then they bis- disbelieved in muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and then they opposed him azdadu thumma azdadu kufra they increased in faith this is one meaning the other meaning which has been mentioned is that the intended meaning are, uh, is those who believed in musa alayhi salam then disbelieved in him by worshiping the calf then they believed in uzair who actually renewed the message of musa alayhi salam then they dis- disbelieved in isa alayhi salam then by rejecting muhammad azdadu kufra they increased in kufr and a third meaning that he mentions is that this is about a group of ahlul kitab in medina who pretended faith initially to the believers and then uh, they said yes but now there is a uh, there's a problem about such and such views in your faith so we do we want to go back to our own faith waqala alladhina waqala ta'ifatun min ahli alkitab amanu billadhi unzila ala alladhina aman wajha an-nahar wa kfuru akhirahu la'allahum yarjaun this is what this mentioned this verse is actually alluding to a group of the ahli alkitab they said to each other go in the morning to the believers and say yes we believe in what you believe it's all good it's all reasonable acceptable and then at the end of the day say no we have thought deeper we have seen your practice and things like that we, we don't think that this is the correct way to weaken their faith to bring confusion and shubha in their mind so this is the third me but none of these meanings are really in congruence with the context of the verse this is not this is talking about a certain people who believed and then disbelieved not different generations for example i mean it is uh, it is uh, not reasonable to say that those who disbelieved in Musa by worshiping calf then they believe they are dying they have died they are gone now we have a new generation this is not connected to that so one wonders why certain co- commentators have actually even mentioned these views yes the other view the third view about ahlul kita uh confessing faith in the morning rejecting in the afternoon it may have some uh some substance but of course this is summazda this is not a, an instance of summazda du kufra so the best interpretation is that this is about the munafiqun or the weak faith among the believers they believed then they 
return, return back to disbelief. Again, they believed, and again, they turned back to disbelief. And then from Mazda to Kofra, they, they continued in disbelief. Now, this may have been for several reasons. One was because they pretended and uh, they wanted to, uh, to somehow show to the believers that they believe in what they believe, but in, in their heart, they did not believe. And again, they pretended and in their heart they did not believe. But a better interpretation is that these are about the people who wavered. Who wavered, who were hesitant all the time. They, they believed and disbelieved. And eventually, they established themselves in disbelief. And went deeper and deeper into that. So, mazdadu kufra. So, to, to sum up, ignore all other interpretations. Those who believe initially and then wavered in their faith because they had, for example, communication with other people, with hypocrites, with disbelievers, with Abdul Qatar, so they turned back. And then again, something happened, they believed, and again, disbelieved, and eventually, their destiny was to be established firmly in disbelief. One very important uh, notion that we have to bear in mind here is in, then increase in disbelief. That means disbelief Kuf has different levels, different depths, as Iman has different levels and depths. Uh, one may go down the, uh, the abyss of disbelief to the extent that there is no way, there is no hope for their redemption. How disbelief intensify? Well, in a number of ways. For example, by insisting on one's denial, although observing contrary evidence, rejecting all evidence, and insisting on, on the denial, this would actually increase the level of disbelief on faith. Or by continuing to sin, despite knowing this is sin, as we have in some narrations as well, that this would sully the heart, would cover the heart in a way that faith would not enter. Kalla malrana ala ulubhim makam yaksaboon, what they have earned has solid their hearts. So as, as this cover, this tint on the heart becomes thicker and thicker, then the person goes deeper and deeper in disbelief. All by radicaling God's messengers, radicaling the book of God, radicaling the believers, this also is an instance which would lead to increase in disbelief. And uh, when a person goes down this path, then there is very, very little hope that they may come back from Mazdaq al-Kufra. And that's why then the verse says, Lam yakun Allahu lahum. Allah shall never forgive them. Well, of course, we have other verses which tell us that repentance is always acceptable. What if these people repent? I mean, what if a person who believes and disbelieves and believes, disbelieves, and then increase in faith, Suddenly something happened and they, they repent to Allah. 
Can you say that their repentance is not acceptable? No, we cannot. Allah has promised Bani Adam, subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, that he always accepts repentance, always. No matter where we are, no matter how deep we are in disbelief, he will accept repentance. And we discussed this in, in, in the other verse in Surah An-Nasa, that إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ عَمِنُوا السُّوءَ بِجَهَانَةٍ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ it is on Allah to accept repentance of those who do evil out of ignorance. And we said every sin is done out of ignorance. And yet Tuhuna Men Karib means before death. They repent soon after means before death. This we discussed it and there were different views on that, but it was clear that until the last breath there is the hope for repentance. So why Allah says here that Lam Allah Allah will never forgive them. Allah Ta'ala says that this is of course a ruling, this is a statement based on the majority of instances. Based based on what is usually common among those who go to deep disbelief. It's very difficult for them to repent. And since rarely, rarely any one of them can succeed to repent and go back, Allah has made a general statement that they are not, uh, they are not, they, they do not deserve to be forgiven because they can't repent. However, if someone in this state, if someone of this category is able to repent, then Allah will forgive them because of the testimony of other verses of the Quran. So, Lam Allah mean that they would not be able to come under the mercy of Allah in terms of repentance. They are not able. If they are able, that's true. So it is mentioning uh, something which is usually common, not, of course, the exceptions. And this, uh, these verses uh, actually uh, clarified and very clearly كَيْفَ يَعْدِ اللَّهُ أَوْمًا كَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِيمَانِهِمْ How can God guide, how would God guide a people who disbelieved after their faith? وَشَهِدُوا أَنَّ الرَّسُولَ حَقَّ This is of course about Ahlul Kitab and they attested that the messenger is حَقَّ and clear signs came to them. Allah would not guide the wronglers, the dhalimeen lot. And then says, Except those among them who repent and reform, in Allah ghafoorun rahim to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then it says, wala layahdiyakum sabila. No shall they guide them to any way. Now, it may mean he would seal their hearts and they cannot accept the truth afterwards. And as the result of their misdeed, or it may mean in the hereafter that he would not guide them to the path of paradise. As we have in other verses, لا ليحديهم طريقة إلا طريقة جهنم Only the path of hell will be 
uh, recognized by them. They are not guided to the right, to the path of paradise. We have an application of this verse in the narrations of the Imams. Inshallah, we leave that for our next week's discussion. Because although this is revealed about the, the contemporaries of the Prophet, and although the general meaning is quite clear, but there are, when we want to apply it for different instances, something that the A'imma alihim did as ta'wil, it becomes more understandable. So, inshallah, we mentioned that at the beginning of our, our next session. Rabbana la qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana. وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاق وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين